In this video, you guys are gonna learn about compression and how to squeeze that golf ball more into the ground so you can produce more distance with the least amount of effort. So there are three simple things that you can do to encourage this to happen more and to help you get a feeling during the next time you practice. And like always, if you guys enjoy the video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you are new to my channel, please subscribe because it really helps me to create more videos like this for you guys. Now let's get started. So first off is what is compression? So it's basically when the club head kind of hits the ball first and then the ground afterwards. And that's kind of optimal when it comes to being able to predict your distances more consistently and also to get the most amount of distance or efficiency out of your strike. The first thing that a lot of people do when, I, when they come in for a lesson and they always ask me, oh, how can I hit more down on it? Um, how can I get that feeling of compression? And all the time I see people that struggle with compression take it back really flat in their takeaway, okay? Now the reason why this is so important is because when the club kind of swings back and into the inside like this, the club head basically just stays very low to the ground, okay? So when the club swings back and stays very low to the ground, there's not much distance, okay? Like, uh, vertically away from the ground, away from the ball. Okay, you can see that's the, the club head stays very low and that affects their takeaway to make it quite flat. And if they do dump it under plane or get the path really too much into out, then the club doesn't have much space to kind of come vertically enough into the ball. So people kind of swing more up on it, kind of like this way. So it would kind of look like swing it low, and they would dump it underneath and then just kind of swing up on it like this. Sometimes they hit the ground really far behind the golf ball like that. So for this kind of player that swings it way to the inside, the only way that they can try to find any sort of compression is to swing that club over the top, which gets that club out in front, and then they can kind of swing down and across the golf ball, uh, which is not ideal when it comes to controlling your flight. You might be able to get some good compression, like in terms of hitting down on it, okay, but that's kind of not optimal. The first thing I always fix first is to ensure that when they, when they take the club back, the club head is just a bit more in front of their hands, okay? And you can see the difference when I go back this way, right? Versus going back this way, my club just is a bit more away from the ground overall, okay? It still goes around me on an arc, okay? But it's, since it's a bit higher, it's just further away from the ground so that when I come down, it's easier for the club to kind of swing into the ground, but still a little bit on that in to out path. All right, so if you are a player that gets the club to swing inside of the hands and kind of stays low below the hands, you basically have to feel the opposite extremes to get it in the right position. So the best way I get people to think about is in this takeaway position, you wanna feel like the club head is in front of your hands, like say 20, 20 degrees, okay? And you also need to feel the club up above the hands about 20 degrees. So if you're low and, uh, and behind, you're trying to feel in front and above, okay? So rehearsals will often look like this. You can kind of see I'm, I'm kind of feeling both. So when I get that club head above my hands, I'm feeling this kind of hinge motion um, in my wrist, this kind of up and down motion here, okay? A lot of people, when they try to feel like the club is ahead of their hands, they kind of drag the handle back like this, but you can kind of still see that the club head is low relative to my hands. So it's important that you feel, yes, one, the club is in front, but also above at the same time, okay? So if you feel like you're doing this, when you go to hit the ball, you'll, you'll probably end up being closer to this right here, okay? That's gonna get the club further away from the ground. And then when you do are able to swing it a little bit from the inside, you'll be able to kind of strike more downwards on that golf ball. Okay, so now the second thing that you can focus on has to do with where you're finishing in the follow through. So when you're watching me from the face on view, I want you to focus on kind of the position of my lead leg, okay? And this has something to do with, you know, weight shift and stuff like that, which is important when, when you're trying to compress the ball. But a lot of people that struggle with compression, they go through the golf ball with their hip and everything kind of behind their lead ankle. So you can kind of see how my, my lead leg is kind of leaning backward, kind of on the way through. 
Okay, so if you're doing that, then that's gonna cause you to keep all of your pressure, the majority of your pressure on the right foot. So instead, the ideal situation is when you go through the shot, you wanna be kind of standing directly on top of your lead ankle. So you can see my, my lead leg is just kind of positioned straight up and down at this point, and I'm just kind of turning around that. So that, that ensures that you're finishing and you're getting enough weight um, correctly onto your lead side. So the other mistake that people make when they try to transfer all their weight to the lead side is that they kind of slide their hip too much. So if you were to just draw like a straight up and down line from my lead leg or from my, um, the edge of my ankle on the lead side, just straight up and down, you basically want to make sure that when you shift your weight and you turn, you kind of stay within that line. Okay, so if I draw that line on my leg, we don't want to create more space between my leg and that line. We don't want to slide and push our hip kind of too far beyond that line either, okay? So a lot of people, when they slide their hip, their upper body kind of leans back, okay? And that's actually gonna cause you to strike the ground um, very, very early and actually cause people to swing more up on it, okay? So it's important that if you do film yourself or view yourself from the face on view, just pay attention to how you're following through and how you're finishing. If you have that line up there, you wanna make sure that as you shift your weight, you're kind of finishing with your body standing directly on top of your lead ankle. And if you have that reference line of that line just straight up, uh, straight up and down um, from the edge of my leg, you wanna be able to stay within that line, okay? Not go backward away from that line and not go too far beyond that line either, okay? So that's a really great one to ensure that you're shifting your weight more properly, you're not doing it excessively, or you're not leaving too much weight kind of behind the golf ball. So the third exercise that you guys can do to help with compression has to do with shaft lean, okay? So I know this, this one can be quite difficult for a lot of people, but most people that struggle with compression don't get the shaft to lean forward enough at impact. I see a lot of, all the time that the shaft kind of leans either straight up and down or even backwards uh, when they strike it. But if you really want to be able to hit downwards on it, okay, you have to have some amount of shaft lean at impact so that on the way through, your longest point forms more so after the golf ball when you're striking an iron, okay? So the exercise that I want you guys to do is kind of a, a variation of the, the uh, punch drill that you might have seen in my previous videos where you kind of stop quickly, as quickly as you can. But in this variation, I want you to focus on um, where your lead wrist is positioned, okay? So this is just a drill, just to focus a bit more on kind of gaining a little bit more shaft lean. So when I strike this one, what I get people to look for is after you strike it, you wanna feel as though you're keeping or you're, you're adding more flex into that lead wrist and you're kind of holding on to it, okay, for as long as you can, but you're still stopping short, okay? So from this front view, I'll just show you that normally when you're trying to train shaft lean, you wanna go through the shot, but you can see that my lead wrist is a bit more flexed, okay? And I'm adding a little bit, just a little bit of kind of supination in that arm, okay? So that my club faces or the toe of my club is a bit more straight up and down. Okay, so you're trying to finish more like this, okay? Focusing on keeping that bend instead of finishing kind of like this, too, too soon in the follow through. You can see that my, my lead wrist is a bit more cupped there, okay? So when I hit this shot, I'll give you guys a close up view of what my lead wrist is looking like, okay? So when I do it correctly and I'm training a bit more shaft lean, you're also trying to feel as though you're trying to, trying to flight the golf ball low, okay? So when I go through it, I'm still stopping quickly, but you can kind of see my lead wrist stays. I'm trying to keep my lead wrist in a flexed position for as long as I can, okay, at this point. What you don't want to do is when you hit the shot, you don't want to add too much extension or cupping in that lead wrist too soon, okay? So the club's all the way up here. My wrist is down here. You can see that the, the, the knuckles are kind of facing back, back at me um, quite early in the follow through, all right? So again, if you want to do it slowly first, right? So again, I'll just show you from the face on, but 
when you're trying to keep the flex, the flex in that lead wrist, you can see that when I do that, the grip stays forward, okay? When I add more extension to that lead wrist, the grip moves backward and the club head goes forward, okay? So that's why when you're doing this exercise to get a feel for shaft lean, you're trying to ensure that you're trying to feel or maintain that flex in that lead wrist, okay? So again, if I do it slowly, I'm going back and I'm trying to keep that lead wrist flexed as I go through it, kind of like looking like this, kind of in that bowed position, all right? And it's okay to add a little bit of that supination in there just so that you can close the club face a little bit. The mistake a lot of people make is when they lean the shaft forward, they actually kind of keep the club face pointing very, very open, okay? And they go through the shot kind of more so more so like this. So you can see that even though my lead wrist is flexed, right, the face is kind of pointing straight up and down. But if you were to go through it with some flex and add a little bit of that kind of supination in there, okay, just a little, you don't have to go crazy with it. That'll help the club face to kind of continue to rotate a bit closed. So that toe of the club is kind of pointing a little bit more straight up in the air, okay? You don't want to go through the shot with the face pointing up to the sky because then you're gonna just hit, hit a lot of big blocks. So that's important, flex, but also add a little bit of that supination so that when you finish, you're looking for that flex here and also the toe of the club pointing a little bit more up to the sky. So give that exercise a try, and that should help give you a feeling of gaining a little bit more shaft lean at impact so that you can start hitting it a little bit lower and starting to feel that the ball kind of compressing or getting that trapping of the golf ball into the ground more. Thank you guys so much for watching. Now, if you have any questions, you can leave a comment down below. Be sure to follow me on my Instagram at Jonathan K. Moss if you have any questions. And also, if you want me to take a look at your swing in person, or if you want to send in your swings to me, you can visit my profile on the Skillist app, and I'll leave the link that, to that in the description box also, in case you're wondering about my online programs. But see you guys next time.